Today, you're gonna to learn how to make motivational Instagram reels, and I'm gonna give you my four-step system to this process, along with all the tools you need to do so, with one of them being ChatGPT. So we're all addicted to Instagram, and it's not all bad, because every now and then, I'll be scrolling, and I'll get one reel that gives me just enough motivation to get off my lazy and into the gym. And while some people call this content cringy, if we take a look at what's out there today, it's far from it. Gang, gang. And honestly, I think that motivating people online is probably one of the best things you can do. So I decided that I'm gonna teach you all how to do it. At the beginning of 2023, I actually made a video about how to make motivational videos for YouTube, but I took all of the feedback I got on that one and I cram packed it into this one. So this video, in my opinion, is way more valuable. Now disclaimer, there's a lot of different ways to make motivational content for Instagram. But if you are truly ready, there's two paths you can take. The first one is creating everything yourself. So that's writing the script, recording the video, and even editing the content, which I'm gonna show you. But the second one is just stealing it. And I'm gonna show you both. I obviously mean take content and use it under the Creative Commons license, whether that's podcasts, movies, TV shows, find a little segment that you like that's motivational. You do your research on that. And no matter what path you choose, I still think you can learn something from every step of the process, no matter what content you're making. So let's start with creators that are repurposing content. If you want to skip, here's the timestamp, but I do recommend watching because there is value. So the first step is actually finding the video clip you want to repurpose. And that's pretty easy. You can just choose anyone that has a lot of interviews or podcasts online. Let's make this random. I'm going to go with Post Malone. If you already know what video it is, go and find it. But if you're not sure, here's what to do. I just asked ChatGPT, what are some interviews or podcasts with Post Malone where he talks about what motivates him? As you can see, the answer here has already given us a few. So I'm just going to go with the first one, which is the Joe Rogan experience. So Post Malone actually talks about his musical journey and what drives him. I think that could be quite interesting. So now what we've got to do is go and find this on YouTube. I've got the video right here. I'm going to copy the link. I'm going to head to youtubetranscript.com. Then I'm going to paste the link. Now I have the entire transcript. See, this video is four hours long. We don't want to go through that manually. So here I hit Command F on my keyboard. And then we just want to search for some keywords where we think he might be talking about what motivates him or what drives him in life and all we have to do is just start searching so that's just the easy one to put in motivation nothing now a good one is if you put in mistake people often talk about mistakes in these motivational clips and that's how you most likely find a section so let's have a look here if you make a mistake that's how you get better if you take away all consequences so that could be a clip or a section that's how to find it and then what you would do is you would just take this video you want to then go to google and find a way to get that video onto your computer wink wink and the great thing about these interviews is because as you can see it's two three four hours long most of the time you can get quite a few clips from one single interview and then you just want to rinse and repeat that process for other interviews podcasts celebrities or whoever you want to create motivational content of and if it's your own podcasts even better and then once you've got all your timestamp clips you would then take those into the editor but before i show you how to edit amazing motivational videos let's first take a look at scripts and how to write them to make good motivational instagram content so the foundation to a good motivational clip on Instagram is the message in the video. And a lot of people can just wing these, but for this one, I just wanted to prep a little bit of a script, you know? And if there's one tip that I need to give you, it's to have strong opinions. You need your content to be polarizing to get super fans. It's got more fucking wrinkles on it than I have, and I'm 44 years of age. Strong opinions spark discussions and a lot of engagement on your content, which then boosts it in the algorithm, so it increases the visibility. You get more loyal followers because followers that really agree with your strong opinions become like super fans like yeah that dude's so right and then finally someone that's polarizing online and puts out polarizing content is a lot more memorable than a neutral person for example just take a look at you know who <coughs> exactly now i came up with my own script and a mistake a lot of people make is they actually use chat gpt for the very first one but the first one you always want to make it 90 percent like straight from your brain if you use ai straight away you're just going to get something that doesn't show your personality or style so i wrote this entire first script but then a trick to speed up the future ones is to paste my first script into ChatGPT, and then I ask it to write a short explainer video about YouTube audience retention, very similar to this one, make it sound a little motivational. As you can see, it just spat out a little like nugget of information in a motivational way. It's a little bit long, so I just gave it the good old, make it shorter, but keep the value prompt. And it did, and honestly, that one's pretty solid. I could use that. When you give examples, the answers you get are a lot better. I don't always just copy and paste this straight away. I try and say it in my own words. You know, I just say the same thing in my words. And in case you're curious, here are my custom instructions. Prioritize concise and valuable answers. Avoid adding unnecessary information. Thank you, because you've got to be nice to AI. So now we've got a script. Here's how I recorded it outside on the balcony. 
All right, so this is the setup on the balcony where I filmed the video. So first of all, for the gear, we've got the Sony a6400 camera, which I'm being recorded on right now. And that was put on this little flimsy tripod right here. On top of that, we're actually using the DJI lav mics, and I'm using that right now also to record with the camera. And then behind me, we have this little softbox, which was very useful because obviously we're recording outside on the balcony, which is a nice and unique setting, better than being in front of a wall. But because it was very bright earlier in the day when I recorded this video, I just wanted to make sure that my face was well lit. And then on top of being well lit with the softbox, we had the camera placed on the tripod right here and the camera was facing me. And while the camera was looking directly at me, I was actually looking off to the side straight at my laptop, which had the script on it here. And the reason I was doing that is because I wanted to make it look like I was talking to someone because we get a lot of these clips online where they're on a podcast and they're talking to someone and they're being filmed from an angle so I just wanted to replicate that and basically create that fake aesthetic that we're used to seeing so often now the reason I've got the laptop placed on multiple boxes here is so that when I was looking off the side to the script my eyes would still be level with the camera and it wouldn't be like I was looking down so it just looked authentic. And then finally, the video needed to be visually engaging, which is why we're in the unique setting of being on the balcony. We've also got the red chair, which I thought looked quite clean and polished, just a little bit more vibrant than a regular chair. And then on top of that, I chose in the video to obviously not have a hat on so we can see my pink hair, because that is definitely gonna catch someone's attention. And also I dressed up just a little bit smarter and a little bit more interesting than this. And then of course, there is a little bit of noise coming from the balcony, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that a little bit later on in this video. Okay, so once I've recorded the video and I've put all the files onto my computer, the very first thing is I drag the raw video into Premiere Pro and then I create a new timeline. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the sequence settings are completely off. So I'm gonna to go to sequence, sequence settings, and I'm gonna change these to the Instagram dimensions, which are 1080 by 1920. As you can see, that gives me the nine by 16 aspect ratio. And I filmed in 25 frames per second, but I'm just gonna change this to 30, because 30 is the best for Instagram Reels. And I'm just gonna hit OK, and then OK. And now this changes, I need to go into effect controls, and I want to change the rotation to minus 90. And then I just want to zoom out, and here, I'm gonna to choose to zoom out entirely. So obviously scale it down to 50%. And I'm actually just gonna adjust this so I take a little bit more of the screen up and I'm a little bit bigger so we don't have so much blank space at the top of the screen. So I think this looks pretty focus good. Focus on creating content. Nothing can stop. So now what we wanna do is actually fix the audio. Because if we take a listen, things are trying to pull you away from create. Like I mentioned earlier, on the balcony there's a lot of background noise. So what I'm going to do is place a marker at the in point and then the out point, hit command M, and I'm just going to change the title of this to needs enhanced audio. And then in presets, I just want to actually change this to MP3. So I just type in MP3, select the highest quality MP3, and then I'm just going to hit export. And then we're going to go to Google and you just search for Adobe podcast. And here we click on Adobe podcast, go to enhanced speech. Now I just drag the audio that I just exported. And then Adobe is going to use AI to enhance the speech and it sounds so much better and it will remove the background noise. And then once that's done, what I'm going to do is just click download. Then I'm going to take this file. By the way, this useful thing here is actually a Mac extension called Dropover. I use it all the time for files. Back to Premiere Pro, and I'm just gonna take this audio and I'm actually just gonna place it right underneath. What I'm gonna do is highlight both, right click, click Synchronize, click OK. Now this is gonna synchronize, and what I do wanna make sure I do is go to the beginning of each, and Adobe always seems to add like an extra frame to the audio, so I do that at the start, and then just check the end. The end seems fine, and I just delete this gap at the beginning. And now let's just take a listen at the difference in audio, right? This is the old version. So much going on, you've got so many distractions. This and now the new version. So much feedback, there's so much noise. So many things are trying to- As you can see, it sounds so much better. What you can do is you can actually get rid of the initial audio entirely, or sometimes what I like to do to still keep a little bit of that ambient noise is just lower it quite a bit but don't get rid of it entirely. And now what I'm gonna do is go through and do a complete rough cut of this video, removing everything that I don't want in it. And the reason I like doing the rough cut in Premiere, because we are gonna to go to another editor afterwards, is just because it's what I'm most used to. And also, I think for like the foundation of the video, Premiere is a great place to start. And then finally, the last thing I wanna do is actually go to Lumetri Color and just do a little bit of color correction. So I'm gonna start in basic, and I always like starting off with auto just to see how it looks, right? And make sure we select source, otherwise if you're on clip, it's only gonna be applied to the clip that you've cut. But if it was source, it will apply to the whole video. So I'm just gonna boost the contrast a little bit more and then maybe 
take out some of the blacks a little bit more. Then under creative, I just want to turn up the vibrance just a little bit. Then once I've done this, hit command M to export, call it rough cut. I'm going to choose a preset that I prepped for TikTok, but because I'm going to put it through another editor, I'm just going to make sure that I turn up the target bit rate by a few more points. And then once that's rendered, I'm going to import it into an online video editor called Veed. So we're going to go to Veed.io. I'm going to click new video, create project. I'm going to open my video in Veed. It's then uploaded. And as you can see, I've got my video right here. Now I've already done the rough cut, a little bit of color correction, and I've enhanced the audio. So what I'm going to do here is add more of the engaging visuals that makes an Instagram reel. So I just click on the video and I'm going to click on adjust. The first thing I'm going to do is actually bring up a vignette. I put it up to maybe like 20. And the reason I do this is because it darkens the edges, it makes the center of the video brighter. We're naturally drawn to, to more brighter things. So the focus will be more on me that can help with retention. The next thing I'm going to do is then add just a little bit of noise ever so slightly and then I'm also going to sharpen it ever so slightly and this for some reason we see people sharpen movie clips on shorts I see that all the time but they overdo it I'm just going to do it ever so slightly so now if I click play in the job in one of the noisiest workplaces ever now the next thing and probably one of the second most important things after the script or the actual clip is the background music. And the great thing about Veed is it actually has a built-in library of stock music. Now, sometimes it can take a little bit of time to find the right music for your Instagram reel. But what I actually do is on Instagram, when I'm scrolling through, I tend to save reels with audios that I like, or I just save the audios. So if I go to my profile and then I go to saved, I'm gonna click on audio. And then I know for a fact that there's one I like that I saved called Snowfall, this one right here, and I'm sure you've heard it. Perfect, right? So I'm gonna click on this one. I'm then gonna copy it. And I'm going to go to, I think it's instavideosave.net slash audio. I use this one, but honestly, you just search download Instagram Reel in Google and like any of the top first three results will do. So I just paste the link, I click download, that then downloads the audio for me. And this is what will make it feel uh, native and contextual to the Instagram platform. Back to Veed, and then I'm going to drag in the audio, place it under my Reel. I'm gonna cut it so it's the same length. Now I'm going to click fit again. And if we take a listen, there's so much feedback, there's so much noise. Just now the audio actually takes a little bit of time to pick up. So I'm going to drag this out and then make it start like so. So let's see how it is. The content creator is having a job in one of the noisiest workplaces ever. There's so okay, this is perfect. I might want to turn this down just a little bit. Three distractions, there's so much feedback. There's so Awesome. And that already sounds a lot better, right? It sounds like one of those Instagram reels you've seen a million times already. So I highly recommend saving those Instagram audios that you come across just so you don't spend hours looking for them when you actually need some. Now the next thing and a foundation to all Instagram reels is subtitles. So what I'm going to do is click on subtitles here and click on subtitle, uh, select the language that I'm talking in, in the videos. And then here I'm just going to click create subtitles and then Veed automatically generates subtitles to my video. And now Premiere Pro also does this, but the reason I use Veed is because it's just a little bit easier to use to customize them to edit them it's a little bit faster and also you can animate them in just a few clicks instead of having to keyframe or add presets i just prefer subtitles in Veed. so now the first thing we're going to do is just go to the styles tab and i've already got the proxima nova font that i have downloaded from online and that is essentially the font that i think instagram and tiktok use which is why i use that as well that way it feels native to the platform. Um, what I want to do is make sure I add some drop shadow. This helps it stand out on the video. And then I actually don't like the fact that my subtitles are on three lines. So what I want to do is go to options. I want to click auto format and then I just want to make sure it's on one line. So I click format and there you go. So now if I play it. Being a content creator is having a job in one of the noisy. <clears throat> Now for the subtitles, a lot of it comes down to preference, but as you can see on the left here, we've got all of our subtitles and I can edit it just like I edit text anywhere else. And I think subtitles look cleaner if we actually remove all the punctuation. So I'm just gonna go through, remove all of the question marks and the commas because it just makes it look way cleaner. And if you're wondering, these orange words are words that the AI wasn't actually sure about, but here it was actually correct. So I can just mark it as correct and there you go. Now I might just move them up a little bit and I'm gonna show you a little bit later on in this video and also give you a little asset that you can download 
code to make sure that your reel is perfect, but we'll get to that in a minute. And now, again, a lot of this comes down to style, right? Because there are a lot of reels actually where people completely reduce the saturation, they have it in black and white, so it gives it uh, a more, uh, more of an aesthetic, I guess. But the subtitles, you usually place them where you want, you put the font that you want, you have the colors that you want. What you can do sometimes as well, let's say there's a specific word that I wanna highlight, so let's say noisiest, right? If I highlight and select it, I can then actually make this one red. Uh, let's just do a little bit more of a vibrant red. Then I can make it bold, but I don't have that font in bold, so I can't make that one bold. But so now if we play it back. Content creator is having a job in one of the noisiest workplaces ever. So that's super cool, but I actually want to choose to have my subtitles white all the way through. And then if I go to style, here under animations, you can actually animate them. Float in is probably one of my favorites, actually. Noisiest workplaces ever. There are so many distractions, there's so much feedback, there's so much noise. And to make them even easier to read, I could even go and change the color, make them a little bit more of a, a vibrant yellow. And I think making them smaller actually gives them sometimes a little bit of a nicer aesthetic. And then you know what? I might actually drag myself out just a little bit more so I take up more of the screen. And so now we've got subtitles, we've got the background music, but there's a lot more things we can do to make the video more engaging. The first one being stock footage. So if I click on media in the stock video menu, here I can search for whatever I want. So let's just say I search for noisy workplace. Here I've then got a guy in a noisy environment. So I could click on this. If I click on it, it adds it to my video at the point where my playhead is placed. I'm gonna find the part where I say noisiest workplaces, okay? Um, what I might do is also reduce the saturation for this video just so it matches mine. And then you can go through and add stock footage all the way through just the same way. So let's say distractions. Sometimes you've got to get creative with what you're looking for, but if I type in network, there's like a lot of different things Things going on, move this around, then maybe to match the style of mine, make it dark gray. There's so well. many distractions, there's so much feedback, there's so much noise just going on. And then you can add that all the way through. And if you have your own B roll, that's even better because custom B roll most of the time works better than stock footage. And there's still a few more things we could do to make the video engaging. The next one could be a progress bar. So if I click on elements, we've got these easy progress bars here. So if I just click on it, it adds a progress bar to my video. And now I can just make this the size I want, click and drag it. Let's say I place it under the subtitles for aesthetic purposes, and I might just change the color. Um, let's just, have, just go for a yellow, and then the background will be a grayish. And as you can see, it's automatically adapted to the length of my video. So now if I click play. Job is trying to pull you away from creating content. I'm a full-time content creator, and it happens. And I think that looks quite nice. And the last touch is I'm gonna add some text, and that text is just gonna be my Instagram handle, because occasionally people tend to steal other people's content and repost it. And sometimes that gets a lot of views. And if your Instagram handle is on there, at least people know it was you, right? So the text has been added. I just drag it to the full length of my video. Or sometimes people are sneaky. They don't add it to the full length. So people think there's none there at first. They'll steal it and then it comes up later. And what you wanna do is just place it in a place that's kind of visible. I'm going to make it a similar yellow. You should be using the same hex code but for speed purposes, I'm not. And then I'm actually gonna change the opacity, let's just say 50. Um, and it doesn't look that good actually in yellow, so I might just make it gray and then change it to 50. And again, this is a question of preference. You can place it here in the middle. You can place it somewhere a little bit more discreet at the top, to the side, just like that maybe. But if you want it to be more visible, I highly suggest towards the area where your subtitles in the progress bar is. So now if I press play. right? And all of these things are trying to pull you away from creating content. I'm a full-time content creator and it happens that sometimes I do. And that's looking pretty spot on. Now earlier I mentioned there's one thing you want to do an asset you can download to double check that your reel is as best as it can be and that asset is just a PNG file that's actually the social safe zones and if I just add it to my project and then I just drag it out so it's the size of the video. If you take a look everything that needs to be visible is visible or not hidden by these blocks and if you're wondering what these blocks are different devices crop videos differently. On red here at the sides this is sometimes video that completely gets cut off. So you never want something too close to the edges. In orange at the top, you often have the title or like the Reels logo or the TikTok logo. At the bottom, you've got the description and then the username. On the yellow here, you actually have the social icons. And so it's just the best practice to avoid these areas as much as possible. And this will be in the description to download for free, just so you can make sure that your Reels are as best as they can be. Once you've kind of gone through your video and it's not hiding anything, you can just delete that. And there's so much more you can do, but it's up to preference, right? Let's say you wanted a little bit more movement on the video. I like it when it's stayed on a tripod because it feels more like a podcast, the cameras aren't moving, but you can, let's just say, split the video here. I select this video and then I go onto animations and let's just say I do the Ken Burns in. And now if I play it from the beginning, 
as you can see that's kind of zooming in on my face and you can customize that and then there's a few different animations you can animate in text images it's kind of entirely up to you but once you've done you go to done select the settings for instagram and then make sure burn subtitles is toggled on and then you just click export video and you have made your motivational instagram reel if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more and with that being said peace out